Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and today we're going to talk cable management. Now I know it's not the most exciting topic in the computer industry but whereas you can just buy your dual Titan X's and your Threadripper and your RGB everything, cable management actually takes some thought, some skill and some time to put into it and so I really appreciate when a PC builder does a really good job of that. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can easily and cheaply do great cable management with just standard hardware. So in order to clean up this mess we're going to need a few basic tools. So first of all some angle cutters. Now preferably you get a flush cutter but I don't have one so we're using this one. Uh, we're going to need zip ties. This is a massive bag because I use these on all my builds. Um, just medium sized zip ties. We're going to try and use as few of those as possible for environmental reasons. So I also have these um, velcro straps. These come from Ikea. They're dirt cheap and they're actually in a lot of cases cleaner looking than zip ties. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I always start with is the uh, front IO cabling. Um, not the big cables like this USB 3 cable, but the small ones for your power button and all that stuff. Um, what I like to do is route those as the bottom layer in my build so that in this case there's only one of them, but you just end up with this tiny little cable. The reason is you can hide these thin cables underneath thicker cables. So we're going to start and when you build as well you start with the thin layers and you always work to the big cables at the end. And now what you can do with these, with this case at least, you can just start hiding them behind or on top of your power supply. We're going to do the same exact same thing with these fan cables. So these are from the front fans. So this is already a second step and you can just stash these on top of your power supply. And so just like that, the entire front IO cables have been removed effectively. We already did these guys, the front power button and LEDs and that sort of stuff. So next up are the thicker cables. So that's your HD audio cable and your USB 3 cable. Problem with USB 3 cables is they're always too long. So instead of doing a clean L bend, we have to go all the way around. Pretty annoying because it doesn't quite line up with this one, uh, but we're just going to do it. So. We're trying not to cross cables ever. So the USB 3 as well, make sure it's nice and flush next to each other. And we're going to put all of this on the left side of our I.O. here. And then the other side of the bend we're putting on the right side. Our 24 pin then can just go here and just hold everything in place. You could also put the 24 pin on top like so, but you know that depends on how much room you have to work with. Um, and what's really handy with Fantex cases, NZXT and Fractal as well, I think, um, they have these clamp style um, Velcro straps. So you just have to put them through and then you can easily just compress the entire thing. You can really pull hard on this and compress this entire area to make sure it all looks clean. So with me here, I'm going next to the USB 3 cable. Um, but you can also go on top. In this example right now we're just using standard Be Quiet cables and it's just one thick cable. A lot of you may be using stuff like this. This is a Nanoxia uh, extension cable which would go in like so. Uh, and as you can see if you use these you can really easily use them to cover up everything and make your system look super good. The reason I'm not using these is because they add in another 30 centimeters of length and that has to go somewhere and we're going as clean as possible with standard hardware. So as we move our way down here we get a bit of an issue. So with the Fantex P350X the drives are in the front uh, but say the cables go in from that side over there not from this side. Uh, so what that means is that the SATA cables exit the motherboard and then they have to go around the USB 3 cable because as I said we don't want to overlap. If we overlap cables we add thickness and that just looks ugly. So I'm just going to try and group these together like so. Now of course you can do some tweaking here so you can make sure all of these um, I.O. cables are dead straight um, next to the 24 pin. Make sure your USB 3 cable goes down far enough so that it actually gets clamped in by this thing and then you can just pull everything really nice and tight. And just like that, this is pretty much the entire front already done. And for standard cables, this looks pretty good already. 
Now, so far we haven't used a single zip tie, but that's all about to change because we have this big ass A pin here and also a fan cable. Now, this case has a tiny little zip tie hook here. So the first task is to get a zip tie through there. Top tip when you're using zip ties, make sure all of them loop in the same direction. It'll just look cleaner when you're done and just thread it through, try and get the other end, which can be a bit tricky, of course just like that. And then again, the same thing. We're going to use the thick cable to hide the thin cable. So the thin one goes all the way back there. Then you grab your eight pin and you don't want to tighten these all the way down already, but you just want to get a decent idea. So you put your eight pin behind this ledge here. It won't work with some cases that hook behind there, but in the rear, it's usually fine. And you just get it somewhat tight, but not fully tight because you want to be able to move the cable later. We're then going to work our way down, and this is also with Fantex cases and a lot of others. Um, they have these drop and, lock, drop and lock brackets, and you can use these to mount SSDs, or you can be slightly more creative with them. You can just push your 8-pin in there, drop and lock, and now this 8-pin is completely out of the way. Same for the fan cable, completely invisible, and we didn't have to use any zip ties. So now for our basement. This is by far the most difficult part of cable management in the P350X. Um, you have a lot of cables and most of them are way too long. So the first thing we're gonna do is do the usual trick of just hiding them in the basement underneath our hard drive caddy. So we just did that for the PCIe power and we're gonna do the same for the SATA power, which also connects up to our um, RGB controller. So we can just take all of these cables along with the 24 pin. And now we're going to use one of the Velcro straps. Now there are different ways of using these. Normally what you do is you hook these around one cable and then just add the other ones. But to get um, slightly less thickness, I'm going to use all of them at the same time. So get your additional header for additional RGB, get it out of the way so you can access it later on. And what we're going to do is just hooking everything together here, like so. And again, we're going to go pretty tight, but not completely tight just yet, um, because we want to be able to adjust things later on. For example, what I notice now is that this cable here is also in the way. So I'm going to add this to the loop. And this is why I don't really like to use zip ties all that much, because you have to cut them and use new ones every single time. Now, of course, this is all planned. I have done this build before, um, so I know how it's gonna be. But if you're just building a system and cable managing it, there is a possibility that you'll have to cut and then use zip ties again. So here as well, this bend looks a bit ugly. The bend goes too far. So what we're going to do is rotate it or just push it through ever so slightly, get it all nice and straight and then we can deal with it elsewhere where it's definitely not gonna be visible. Okay, so this looks okay-ish already, but the problem is it's too close towards us. We want everything nice and flush in there like so. I'm going to use these cables here, the thin ones from the, um, the motherboard IO, and I'm just going to anchor the big cables to that one. So let's do that real quick. All right, so our final step, the A pin here at the bottom. Um, Fantex includes these zip tie hoops here and what they want you to do is mount it like this, but I kind of think it looks ugly. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually mount it lower. Now there is not enough room between the power supply and the case here to mount the uh, 8 pin, but what I can do is stash the HD audio cable underneath there. So I'm just going to wiggle that in like so. And now that cable is completely hidden. You do have to check from the other side that it's not sticking through the hole. So with the HD audio out of the way, we can move to our final cable. What you can see right here is that I did put a stick on zip tie hoop here. So this is just double sided tape and a little plastic clip. Uh, we're not really going to need to use this because the cable, as you can see, is so nice and tight that it'll just sit there on its own like so. However, because you know I tend to, um, like everything nice and tight. I'm going to use an additional zip tie hoop and I'm just going to hoop it around this little thing.
and just make sure you align the cable properly. Again, it's still loose at the top, so we can still tighten it there. But just tighten it down, rotate it out of the way, and we can have a little overlook of our build. So the first thing we want to know with this side of the system is, are we happy with how tight everything is? So right here, everything's nice and tight, and then that means that I can just tighten this one down to cut later. Follow the cable down up to this point, so nice 90 degree corner before it then disappears into this basement area over there. Again, I'm pretty happy with this because I think it looks as clean as we can make it look. So this one as well, tighten it, done. We're then going to move further away, this area here. Now, this is a tricky one. So we do have two front fan cables coming out here and we have this annoying 90 degree angle onto our SATA power for the case RGB. What I'd like to do is make this a straight connector or a pass-through connector, but again, standard hardware, so we're not gonna start cutting up the cables of this case. So this is about as clean as we can make it look using that standard hardware. Moving up even further, again, this looks pretty clean. So right now, all that's left for us to do is cut the edges off. So preferably with a, a flush cutter, but I don't have one, and so I have this tiny little thing there and just rotate it out of the way. And then we can repeat the exact same process here up top. Just cut it and rotate it out of the way. All right, guys, so there we go. This is basically it with standard cables. Um, it looks pretty clean if you ask me. Again, as I said, if you're going to use these extenders, you can really cover everything up because it'll just hide everything. Um, but for now, this is where I'm going to leave it. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. And other than the usual like, share, subscribe stuff, what I would really appreciate is if you were to tag me on Twitter or Instagram showing off your cable management. So please do that and just tag me on the social media stuff. Anyway, massive thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.